collective action problem that we told them. If you don't get the most efficient allocation of people in these countries, we want it to change that. They then told us, well, you know, really bad to be on the fringes of cities and bad to be really far away. Mr. Speaker, I caught a cab from Shah Alam to Kuala Lumpur last night. It took, well, not last night, the night before. It took me two hours to get there. Are you honestly telling me that you would rather someone lives two hours away from the centre of a city rather than, 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 than live in a slightly smaller city where they could live closer to the centre and, 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 and you know, access all the types of resources that you guys want to? This debate is not about like, you know, allowing people access to the biggest city, it is allowing people access to a city. That's what we provide you and we show you how we can get more, uh, how, how, we, how we can get better resources. And, and you know, this still, still, still the third thing is a ridiculous claim that we didn't actually consider the alternative. We show you why these small cities would grow because they signal to the market that is currently good for the collective action problem. On this stuff about infrastructure, the only analysis we got was like, these countries are controlled by rich, evil people who don't want infrastructure to be better. Firstly, that is simply not true. We said that a lot of these countries are democracies, and there are significant populist movements within these countries. For example, India, where, where, where Manmohan Singh is like, you know, currently the Prime Minister there, and he is, and he is elected on a very populist mandate. But secondly, right, the rich people could not live outside these cities. They were not like divorced from the consequences. That's the material that we brought in, hasn't really been responded to. Because this is the problem with the infrastructure in this city, right? Then the rich people are affected by that as well, and they're going to use their apparent lobbying power in order to get that kind of change. But thirdly, a lot of the things that we were talking about were apolitical and didn't require a bill to go through Parliament. Things like people using push bikes to ride to work instead of using cars. That's a change we've seen in Beijing in recent years because the city has expanded so much that people can no longer ride to work and they're perfectly happy doing so before. They haven't dealt with that analysis about, you know, uh, they haven't dealt with that analysis about apolitical things that we can do. But, but fourthly, right, is the solution to a problem where the rich control your Parliament to gratify the to, to gratify the wishes of the rich and say, yeah, sure, we can have, like, you, you, you can, like, buy up all the land that you want. But also, we just don't think that the power of these rich people is that great. Because if these countries are that poor, then there aren't many of those rich people, right? So, it's, so, so, so when it's a democracy, those poor people can collectivize and they can vote. On this stuff about, like, you know, you've already built the city and therefore you can't change any of the infrastructure yet. Like, this is obviously untrue. Like, the history of civilization shows that you can change the city and build more infrastructure. But additionally, like, 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 like these things didn't have to be all at once. You could do incremental things that were much easier, like widening roads that already exist. You didn't have to build a new highway, right? You could improve current public transport system, add new lines that are starting from scratch, just building an entire new one. Analysis that has gone unresponded to. On the last question, so given that I've shown you that the development that I get is not as great as you want and has a lot of harms, we, we, we think that the environmental impacts do not justify this model at all. These guys were again very uncharitable when they were like, these green zones are really arbitrary. We didn't have to support green zones around every city, Mr. Speaker. We had to support green zones where they would be efficient, green zones where they would work and where they would and, 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 and where they're working at the moment. We, we said, and, like, and they tried to define this out of the debate and, 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 say, and say that we can't actually get change. We didn't stand for those stupid green zones that were like, you know, allow farming but not people to build, because that would be like an arbitrary policy and a particularly dumb one. We say we would ban those. But even if we did, uh, like, like, you know, even if we do, even if we did stand behind green zones that literally only stop people building houses there, we brought you a number of benefits. Because we told you about things like noise and light pollution that had an incredible impact on the environment and on things like animals. The people living there had a terrible environmental consequence as opposed to people just traveling through that area. Um, third speaker, sorry, third speaker that's, uh, yeah, third speaker then just told us well, all, 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 like, all the problems you guys had with resource extraction I've already showed you why people don't just log for resource extraction, they also do it to build areas. We also think the forest group is a massive problem in Brazil and something that we want to spot. Madam Speaker, we don't think that it is worth sacrificing the environment in this way in order to gain the marginal development opportunities that these guys wanted to. So for these reasons, the motion must fall.